Alexandra. Yes, thank you. Welcome. Good morning, afternoon. You've good got afternoon. Uh, yes, good five morning. minutes. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a long one. Five minutes. A news article in 2014 recounted how an OSIG investor concerned about the money losing prospect of a CFL team recalled thinking, can we do multiple teams? There was the redevelopment of the park, streams of revenue, getting control of the real estate. Now, in response to OSIG's proposal, the city is recommending another $437.7 million in spending and $331.3 million of 40-year debt on a hope that things will be different next time around. But given the costs and risks, who is going to take control of taxpayers' interests and make a decision that brings the greatest benefit to the residents of Ottawa. Next slide, please. The report presents a less than veiled threat. The city must fund OSAG's plan or OSAG will choose to leave. Yet with a shocking lack of transparency, a wide range of possible default costs from 407 million all the way down to 118 million are given without disclosing the estimate's key caveat, depending on the length of time the impacts of the pandemic are experienced. The range estimate repeats almost verbatim from the Lansdowne 2022 annual report, but the qualifier has disappeared. Why? We've learned from the 2023 annual report, and we heard that this morning, that Lansdowne operations are back to pre-pandemic levels. Surely, for a decision this large, we need to see a transparent assessment of not only costs, but also financial gains to the city under a default scenario. Next slide, please. I've completed an analysis, uh, rudimentary, but there's something to work with here, of estimated financial gains in the case of default. By accepting the income and cash flow projections for the 40-year period, 2022 to 2066, provided in document 11, and I've made a number of adjustments, so quite a number, that include the loss of new retail, uh, equity payouts, facilities renovations, and also have adjusted uh, the estimate with, with the cost estimate provided by the chief financial officer. Under a do-nothing scenario, the total projected financial gain to the city would be $1.05 billion. Next slide, please. Although disregard for the Ottawa taxpayer permeates the report, Lansdowne's property tax uplift is one of the starker examples. Calgary recently tried out a similar Lansdowne-style property tax uplift pilot and decided to reject its use. Why? Well, in Calgary's own words, quote, the city's budget already considers all of the property taxes that are generated and invests them on a citywide basis. This allows for flexibility on where funds are best allocated in accordance with council priorities. Council priorities. Ottawa has a number of these, but to demolish and rebuild recently renovated, structurally sound and perfectly adequate sporting facilities at Lansdowne simply is not a defensible priority. I urge you to vote no and take control of $437.7 million for the sake of all Ottawa residents. Thank you.